Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Blair or the Illuminati and today I'd like to talk to you about a company called Dolls Kill. Now, this company has been on my radar for quite a while now, but it's not because they're an MLM or anything, which to clarify, they're not. But believe me, this company has plenty of controversy and I've just had one too many final straws for me to support them, you know what I mean? And what's really funny about this script and this video as an entirety, it was actually created like a couple months ago before the whole BLM movement really kicked up over the summertime. And I had to not publish this video and go back and rewrite and rework this because of what happened. Because you definitely guessed it, Dolls Kill got involved and yeah, they didn't do it right. So now we have something else we have to discuss. So it took me a while to swing back around to relook at all of this. So here we are finally, you guys know the drill. We're gonna start by talking about how they were founded, what they claim to be about, and then dig right into the truth and sort fact from fiction. So without any further ado, let's get into the video. Dolls Kill is a clothing brand founded in 2011 by Bobby Farahi and Shadi slash Shadi Lin. Her real name is Shadi, but she goes by her DJ name Shadi. Anyway, the clothes are pretty similar to that Hot Topic kind of look with a fair amount of punk clothing and graphic tees. It seems relatively overpriced to me, but at a first glance, some of the stuff seems initially pretty cute. Now, if you've taken a couple glances at my Instagram from time to time, you've probably seen that every once in a while, the 2006 emo comes out of me and I also get down with the goth lacy leather vibes. And Dolls Kill has been on my radar as a location I used to be told to purchase said clothes, but when I started digging into them, I realized I couldn't give them a single fucking penny. But Dolls Kill has been called a magnet for teen and young adult women drawn to its edgy style. After gaining popularity on Instagram, Dolls Kill really began to grow. Their models or dolls were fans of the company that earned the job through photo competition. This gave the brand some authenticity at first, especially given their impressionable audience. I mean, how long have women been saying that they want a variety of people to model clothing instead of only tall size twos? I think this went a long way for Dolls Kill. As Farahi says, when a girl knows Dolls Kill on social media, they don't feel like they're following a brand, but instead a friend of theirs. And I seem to be all for that message at first. Like, hey, that sounds like a pretty dope message. They had Willow, a model for festival wear, Mercy for goth, Darby for punk, and Coco for cute pop princess. It's a great idea, right? Well, it was a great idea until they gave their fifth doll or model the name Molly. Supposedly to name her after the drug, she was a raver character. And just, <laughs> just keep in mind that this brand is targeting teenagers, impressionable audiences, and they're naming their models after drugs. I don't really care how edgy you are, that's just irresponsible. I understand this might be a little crazy to some of you, but I do have a really strong moral code when it deals with how an adult or our brand has to deal with children. Part of that belief in the brand is that you shouldn't ever condone drug usage to children and you shouldn't sexualize children and you shouldn't show children sexual things. I understand how that's something that some people perhaps don't have that strong of a moral compass about, Dolls Kill included, but you know, it's just something I wanted to put out there and make a little bit public. But anyway, the point here is that I don't care how edgy of a brand you are, you also have to be a responsible edgy brand and condoning drugs, I don't know, not cute. Now, like I said, I think obviously the name Molly has certain implications, but if you think that they just casually named the raver girl Molly just for the heck of it, then that's fine. But let's take a look at what Farahi dug himself into when he told Vox this. It's a real girl, it's authentic. We give them the reins to these people to be themselves. At Coachella, we'll do a photo shoot and the next thing you know, fans are partying with them and doing drugs with them and getting in the pictures. So your models, these real people that your young audience is looking up to are doing drugs with their fans and you just admitted that so casually, like this is a normal thing. Like I said, I've had my suspicions about why you would name the raver girl Molly and well, the CEO just confirmed it for me. 
You're supposed to be running a business. You can't act like you're giving people an authentic face to admire in one sentence and then tell me they're doing God knows what kind of drugs in the next. It just doesn't add up. And listen, this is just the tip of the iceberg, so I am a bit nervous for what's to come. I'm not gonna lie here, but let's keep going. So after about three years of some serious growth and 3.5 million in sales in 2012, then 7.5 million in 2013, 2014 proved to be the turning point for Dolls Kill. A Seattle-based venture capital firm, Mavron, invested $5 million into their company. Mavron was founded by the CEO of Starbucks and a former investment baker, so you know there's plenty of money to be had there. Now, when I went onto Wikipedia to try and give myself a baseline for what happened next, find out some of these scandals and all of that, well, you guessed it, there was nothing to be found. So after the funding, Betsy McLaughlin, the former CEO of Hot Topic, joined the company's board and they opened a pop-up shop in 2017. And in 2018, they relaunched a brand with a 90s throwback theme to make some of that sweet, sweet nostalgia money. But other than that, nothing, no scandals, no nastiness. They apparently went with Candy instead of the name Molly and then added Mia to the dolls list, but not much. From their Wikipedia page alone, things look pretty clean. Also, as an aside here, I noticed that every single one of these models are a very fit, thin, white young woman. So what was that about more representation again? Now, I'm not saying that these women aren't real people, though I do find it funny to be calling them real when these aren't even their real names. But what about the young women that are diverse? What about plus sizes? What about someone who's African-American, Asian, Indian, mixed, disabled, trans, even a guy? No. They may come across like you're following a friend on Instagram, but not every one of my friends is a model. I got a bit frustrated seeing this, honestly. Like, it's one thing to not be diverse and inclusive. That's bad enough in 2020. But to claim that you have real, authentic people that are genuine people you follow on Instagram and you can look up to and then you pull this kind of shit, like, <laughs> it's laughable. So I went ahead and clicked on each of the dolls in their little profile pages to see what they're all about. I wanted to see who these young women, these teenage girls really, who are they buying from? The first one is Coco, classic femininity. According to her, I shatter your preconceived notions with the flip of my perfectly manicured middle finger like a fine rosé. I'm pleasing to senses, but I'm built to fuck you up. Mm, yes, that is extremely classy. Let's teach girls to flip people off and say that they're built to fuck you up. Now, while I'll say that is perfectly okay to say, I wouldn't really say that's classy. When I most certainly have flipped somebody off, I wouldn't say that's my classiest moment. But anyway, we have six profiles to go through, so let's see what the others have to say. The next up is Willow. Her profile says, I taught your boyfriend how to roll a blunt. I'm a bit of a Joan Jett with a hint of Janis Joplin, very enlightened, also very high right now. <laughs> oh God, I don't even know what to say about that. Because sure, we all want a little Janis Joplin and you know, who struggled with heroin and died at the age of 27, and Joan Jett, who's also dealt with addiction problems. Which, as for Joan Jett, fantastic recovery, sis. I absolutely love it, and it's great that you could be raw and real with your audiences throughout the years. But again, you've got to remember that with each of these little one-liner shenanigans they have about their models, these are things that are actively targeted at teenagers and young adults. Again, something that I find inappropriate to market. <laughs> Like going back to the Janis Joplin and Joan Jett stuff, like I don't wanna be a buzzkill here and I'm not trying to say, oh my God, smoking, getting high is terrible, it's disgusting, whatever. But like if you're a teenager and your brain hasn't fully developed yet, then perhaps not, perhaps it's something you shouldn't be doing. I mean, on Willow's page, it has a photo of two girls with tongue strips. Like, I don't, I don't know why you're promoting this to teens, but it just doesn't feel okay to me. Maybe I truly am entering the boomer like, thought process in my life, but I just feel like promoting drugs and knowing your audience is partially underage, just, I don't know, it just seems irresponsible to me. So next we have Candy with the I in her name, and it kind of looks like a pill to me, but 
I was surprised that her profile wasn't actually the worst of the bunch. If anyone was going to be talking about drugs, I figured it would be her, but she was pretty tame, honestly. Mercy had a pretty like, although she's got some weird half-naked photos, whatever, um, pretty tame otherwise. Now Darby, and, and here we are again, we're back to wondering why this is marketed towards teens again, or towards anyone for that matter. Let me just ask you this, and we're gonna read this, but is this the message you're trying to get teens to like get into? Let me go ahead and read this for you. Your vicious yet body demeanor leaves people wondering whether you want to fight them or to fuck them. You've got a steel toed stride and a switchblade tucked in your back pocket of your shredded jeans because you're ready to brawl for your babes anytime, anywhere. You'll tear straight into the center of a mosh pit and punch somebody's boyfriend in the face just to steal the vintage band tee off his back. Again, maybe I'm totally out of line with this, but these are the faces of Dolls Kill. Sexuality, violence, and drug usage. And again, this is partially marketed at minors. Why can't it be six women that are edgy without being completely violent or overly sexualized or anything? Like, why is that not okay? It would still absolutely get the message across from a marketing perspective and... You know, you wouldn't have this kind of issue, but okay, go off. But like, God, like the the issue with Darby, like, I don't know. There's nothing wrong with having a bunch of punk or goth clothes and saying you love vintage tees and having an attitude and wearing combat boots and all this. Like, why? Like, why? Whatever. Anyway, we've got one more girl to look at. So let's dig into her as well. Now, the last girl, Mia, is just, her whole aesthetic is just being superficial. Nothing really special there, but just that's kind of what it is. I think I just want to say that I don't see these young women, these models, these dolls, whatever. They're not really role models in any capacity. They're really just garbage, over-exaggerated stereotypes of young women. And this is how Dolls Kill built their platform and grew. This is what they base their company on, and it's even in their name. But we haven't even reached the nitty gritty yet. First, let's talk about what it is these ladies are actually selling. Now, when I first looked at the clothing at a very first glance at the website, I was like, okay, this isn't all bad. But a lot of it looks super crazy overpriced and some of it really tacky. So when I say this stuff is overpriced, take a look at this. Like (laughs) $35 for a crop top that says, When life is shit, turn the music up. Like, it honestly kind of looks like the graphic was made in Microsoft Paint and this is just some cheap black t-shirt like cut in half, but they want $35 for it. Not happening for me. Like, sure, there are a few nice items I'm absolutely positive tucked into this website, but like there's a dress like skirt set that just literally looks like black saran wrap and it costs $42, so I'm good fam. And I guess as a side note, like since the time that this script was first made to now when I'm actually recording it, it looks like this skirt set's on fire or on fire. Fuck. (laughs) It looks like it's on sale. It might as well be on fire too though, but it's on sale. You'll also start to notice how the more you scroll, how more like sexual some of the items become. Like it's not to say that Hot Topic or Fashion Over or whatever doesn't carry these sort of items, but If you're under in their girls section, like there isn't a lingerie tab and the most revealing thing you'll find in sleepwear is something like this. Like they're not promoting lingerie to teenagers. And if you do search panties, it's photos of the underwear, not on people. And there's differently sized women very easily found in their clothing, pajamas, et cetera. And this is for hot topic, by the way. Again, maybe it's me and I'm thinking way too far into this, but When Dollskill has an entire tab devoted to pasties and many of them pretty clearly meant to show off, it just doesn't tell me that they're there to prevent bra lines or anything, which again is fine, but don't promote to teenagers. Now let's go into their makeup section because we've looked at the clothes and now it's time to see what they've got going on in this department. One of the first palettes I clicked on had me seriously annoyed because I look at the eyeshadow and tell me if you can find an ingredient list because I couldn't. I have no way of knowing what I'm about to put on my face. Under description, it tells me what the product is. And under details, 
it says color and in some will say vegan or cruelty free, etc. And then a size guide for some reason and under view more, I'm just getting eyeshadow, eyes and the palette name. And it's kind of like this for every palette I clicked on. So how am I supposed to know it's vegan when I don't even have an ingredient list to verify? My skin is sensitive to many makeup and skin products, and I personally am one of those people that I need to know what's in my products, so I couldn't even purchase from this company. Instead, I have to go to the source, which in this case would be Spoiled Lips, and nothing. Neither Dolls Kill or Spoiled Lips tell me anything. Like, they can't tell me anything what's in this, like, eyeshadow. Like, am I missing something? Now, in some of the places they carry, like Lunatic Labs, They do claim to be vegan and their ingredient list does check out, but a bunch of other eyeshadow palettes and beauty products are just things I couldn't even verify. Like Taste Bunny, when I click shop, it takes me to a cluttered Amazon page with almost no information on the only eyeshadow I could find. Like there's just no way to know what you're putting on your face and more products than not are overpriced and in my opinion, a bit tacky. There's plenty of reason to not want to shop here, but while the hate, Let's dig into some of their scandals next, and we'll start with Dolls Kill ripping off artists. Dolls Kill has had rumors going on around since like 2015 about them stealing designs from other artists and companies. One swimsuit originally from Mariala.com looks absolutely identical to the one that they came out with the following year. Now, it would be one thing if it was an honest mistake. Perhaps they could come out and say, oh my gosh, we had no idea, we're so sorry. We'll investigate that and take it down. Stuff happens and it was an accident. But if you keep scrolling, you can see the conversation over on Twitter where when accused of theft, Shoddy Lynn says this, You should do your research. This is a swimsuit Rihanna wore in April of 2014, which we had Minimale Animale brand produce for us. Get your shit straight before you talk some bullshit. Which that's again, just not an appropriate answer to say. By the looks of things, it seems like the Minimal Animale stole this from the independent designer and then recreated it for Dolls Kill. But if this is their reaction to things when a co-founder is just cursing out concerned consumers, I got to seriously question what business they think they're running here. So I went to look at some other brands they carry and surprise, surprise, one of them is Lime Crime. Now I've already done an entire video about how shady that company is. So I guess it's no surprise that shady companies work with, well, shady companies. Another one they work with is called Bone Idol, which by the looks of things has been ripping off designs for literally years. And I mean, I can believe a few incidents here and there. It's not like a bad girl pin on these random fuzzy things seems that unique. That's no criticism or shade to whoever made them, but it could be easily ripped off. There's a design called Broken Promises that they did pay an artist for, but then a design from Drool Ball that looks suspicious. And I mean, that font seems pretty unique. And Drewball responded to the allegations saying that when confronted by multiple people, they ignored, blocked, or denied it in any way they could. So again, wouldn't this be something you would want to address? That is the part that baffles me. If I ran a clothing line and someone came to me saying how they had a design that was extremely similar and they were selling it first and upset that I was using it, I'd be leaping at the chance to apologize, prove it was an original thought and explain myself if that was the case. But I wouldn't be avoiding or blocking questions. It's such a shady attitude to have, but it doesn't surprise me given how shoddy answered questions earlier. It's shoddy business practice, you may say. I'll see myself out. So there's even a hashtag, hashtag boycott dolls kill that's devoted to tearing apart this brand. And I'm sure a lot of larger companies have some kind of boycott hashtag at some point, but to see one that's seriously active and calling them out for being racist, sexist, and stealing art from small artists, it's something else. Dolls Kill has so much cringy and downright disgusting content to choose from, it's actually almost impressive. Sweatshirts that say, goth is white, which just, uh, mm, I don't know what to say about that, but I'm not surprised. 
They've also got prehistoric princess costumes, and when they were called out for it, here's what they said. Hey doll, the last thing dolls kill would represent is racist. We love and value individuality and originality. Our company was created to represent dolls of all flavors, colors, ideals, etc. And we're here for the misfits, miss legits, and everything in between. I'm sorry if that costume offended you, but to call us racist is pretty ridiculous. We're brassy, sassy, stick it up your assy kind of company, not for the easily offended norm culture. So please take a chill pill and get your panties out of bunch because it ain't that serious, cutie. XOXO, Anna. And yes, what a great way to deal with criticism. We're brassy, sassy, stick it up your assy. God, it makes me cringe. But in case that bit of cultural appropriation wasn't enough for you, we've also got Dolls Kill promoting pedophilia. Have you heard of the book Lolita? The one that's been banned in many places for a lot of reasons, but it's about a middle-aged male having sexual relations with his 12-year-old stepdaughter. It's a controversial classic that details this very serious subject from a criminal's perspective. So that means it's super edgy and we should turn it into lingerie for teenagers. I know that Lolita has become a fashion style, especially in Japan with vintage lacy dresses now, but Dolls Kill wasn't making beautiful Gothic Lolita dresses. No, no, they were not. They were making cheap lingerie for teenagers with the word Lolita right across the crotch. So yeah, that's awesome, I guess. Lolita is a book about a pedophile and they're still selling this and even better at the time I checked, it was sold out. And this is pretty disgusting. I mean, it honestly reminds me of that obsession people get with serial killers, how romanticized Ted Bundy has been in the past. It's disturbing. And I won't say I know any sane company that would put Ted Bundy like, or Ted Bundy's girlfriend, uwu, or some stupid shit on the crotch of women's underwear, but that might as well have been what they've done. It's not cute and it's not a good look, but it gets better. And by better, it means worse. If the Lolita thing wasn't subtle enough for you, what about a shirt that says, dead girls can't say no on it? An artist who goes by Bay Bad Girl has most certainly been criticizing Dolls Kill for stealing a shirt design that was actually hers. You can't say no when you're dead. I mean, I'm pretty stunned at this one, you guys. Like, I mean, you tell me, is this promoting threatening someone into sex because you'll kill them if they don't or promoting sleeping with dead women because they won't reject you or... Maybe it's a mix of both, Hmm. I don't know. My point is, is that it's disgusting and it should have never happened in the first place. Also, way to go from like zero to 100. Willow tells young women to roll blunts and then this shirt. Now it has been removed, but the point is that they still thought it was a good idea to stock and turn it into a thing. Now, in case I still haven't given you enough reason to hate Dolls Kill, let's go ahead and take a look at a few tweets just to prove that this is actually routine like behavior for them. Here is a bloody sanitary pad inside a box of shoes they ship to a customer. Here is calling customers liars and blocking people that call them out instead of addressing concerns. Now, this next story is what's got me pretty angry and this is going to be some of the more recent news I've learned about them aside from the BLM situation that they decided to just (laughs) just light themselves on fire for this summer so we'll get to that in a moment. Bionic Butte is an Instagrammer who was offered a promotion by Nicole Johnson PR with Dolls Kill. She was told that Dolls Kill wanted to collaborate they thought she was suitable and seemed interested. Bionic Butte or Catherine had screenshots and proof of this happening and the emails she got from Nicole. She was interested, messaged them back and got the ball rolling. A partnership was offered, but then rescinded. According to Catherine on her Bionic Butte account tweeted, Dolls Kill offered me a partnership to send me stuff in exchange for promotion. Then they found out I was in a wheelchair told because of sizing and they rescinded the offer. It seems so weird to me that suddenly Dolls Kill finding out that this influencer was in a wheelchair and like that suddenly they're just like, oh, well, you just suddenly don't fit our sizing anymore. So we can't work with you. Like it just doesn't, it just doesn't make sense. Like, I, I don't know. But anyway, let's go on. They told her that they messaged too many people. So they had to take it back. And 
maybe this happens. I've never personally experienced this, but I also don't really do Instagram deals, but you know, okay. As Catherine said, it was kind of unprofessional, whatever. But then people that Catherine knew began getting emails with offers days after her initial interaction with them. So it seems like a bold faced lie right there. Stop making excuses. Just say you're a disgusting company that doesn't wanna work with disabled people. At least that would be the truth. People reached out, other YouTubers, researchers, Instagrammers, etc., and Dolls Kill denied it completely, all of it. They were just covering up one lie with another, saying that they cannot locate any communication with Catherine. Thankfully, when this happened in September, 2019, this seemed to bring up a lot of hate and backlash. Everything I mentioned before came bubbling to the surface and people started demanding apologies and explanations. They even briefly deactivated their Instagram until things blew over, but it's up again. So I guess that, you know, instead of learning their lesson, they just moved on and learned absolutely nothing instead. One YouTuber by the name of Petty Page came out in a video saying that at the start of her YouTube career, she was offered a Dolls Kill product for free promotion and took the offer. However, when she gave them her size, apparently they told her she wouldn't fit in any of their clothes, even though Petty Page says their plus size clothes actually did go up to her size. She said she brushed it off and moved on, but damn, if that isn't telling, then I don't know what is. So they want bigger girls to buy their clothes. Their money is perfectly acceptable, but they don't want to be associated with them professionally. And that's ridiculous. Now, after hearing all of this, I'm pretty disgusted with Dolls Kill. We already know they're not exactly what you would call an ethical company. And they've even partnered with Lime Crime to solidify that. But yeah, if you wanna see a Lime Crime video, cause I know I've mentioned it a couple times, I'll keep a link in the description box or pin it somewhere for you guys as well. Dolls Kill also doesn't have a single doll that's plus sized, person of color or disabled, despite obviously having the opportunity to do so. So that's just something to keep in the back of your mind as well. They've sexualized a lot of young women, teenagers, children really, when you consider that whole Lolita outfit and they make jokes at a rape or necrophilia, depending on how you say the dead woman can't say no shirt situation. It's despicable, frustrating, and I think their founders are aptly named. Shoddy, because it's a shoddy company with shoddy clothes for shoddy prices and shoddy value. There are plenty of alternatives out there. Hell, there are people that make articles that even list alternatives since Dolls Kill's prices are ridiculous as well. Now, obviously, if you wanna still support Dolls Kill after hearing all of this, I can't stop you and I won't stop you. If you want to do that, that is your right to do so. You do you but I think making an informed decision on your purchasing choices is quite important. Dolls Kill might have models of different sizes and skin tones in their dresses, but not as the faces of their company, not as a collaboration partner. To me, their actions have been quite telling, let alone from their theft. It really just shows you how selfish they are and the values they uphold. Now, this is originally where I stopped the script when I wrote this back in April, March timeframe with Allie. And you know, that was quite a bit ago. Back then, that was literally where I would have ended the video. I would have, you know, said thank you guys for watching and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. But if you've been keeping up with Dolls Kill recently for this year or heard anything about them, then you'll know that it doesn't actually end here. Sometimes when I post a video, the company may be in the news later, like how Herbalife ended up settling their lawsuit or how I ended up posting a second Jilly Juice video in like July or whatever. In this case though, before I even finished the video on Dolls Kill and it was sitting in the editing process, there was a massive controversy to add to this list. So much so that I had to go back through this video, add more to the script because I couldn't leave it unfinished like that. Grit Daily posted back in June that social media users are coming together to boycott the fast fashion brand Dolls Kill after its owner, Shadi Lin, took to Instagram to post a video response to some of her company's behavior over the past couple years. In the wake of the Black Lives Matter protests that have erupted around the world, Lin posted on Instagram in solidarity with the police that were, at the time, attacking and detaining protesters around Los Angeles. Shortly after that, the company began receiving an influx of criticism on its social media pages for choosing to stand in solidarity with the police rather than the Black Lives Matter movement, a movement that much of its consumer demographic is a part of. This was not the first time that the company has received negative criticism though. In the past, it's faced boycotts for cultural appropriation, 
stealing designs from black artists, and even selling articles of clothing that suggest an allegiance to white nationalist groups, as well as romanticizing things like rape with articles of clothing that say things like, goth is white or dead girls can't say no. Her caption on the photo read, direct action in its glory, hashtag Black Lives Matter, and showed a photo of at least a dozen officers outside her store. To say Shadi can't read the room is a massive understatement here. I know people are going to have a difference of opinion about the police and it is quite a touchy subject right now, but to praise police directly after what happened to George Floyd, yeah, I think it would be extremely stupid to expect no backlash from that. But by the looks of things, even though her comments did lead to criticism, it was actually her apology video that Grit Daily blames for the loss of followers, customers, and brands. Her apology comes across as extremely fake, like it's read from a script and overall it's also really generic. She says, here I am today to apologize for the damage and pain that my actions caused you, the Dolls Kill community. I did something that hurt people. I was not trying to do that. This apology is what many point to her loss of followers and collaborators. After all, her comments may have been offensive, but to take them back only because of backlash with a fake ass apology, it only added fuel to the fire she built. Plus, only more people began to notice the goth is white and other questionable or downright racist clothing they'd sold in the past. Here's what one source says. They are taking steps to do their part in fighting racism and inequality. They outline four steps they're planning, which they say is just the beginning. As said in their previous statement, they're pledging to purchase $1 million worth of product from black owned designers and brands and are donating all profits to charities and organizations of their choice. They also say they've donated $100,000 to the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, the NAACP, and will match all employee donations. They're pledging to amplify the voices of people of color with their channels and lend their platform to support the Black Lives Matter movement. They are also going to examine all of our processes across Dolls Kill, from the way we select merchandise to the way we hire. And hey, I'd love to think that this was the kick in the ass Dolls Kill needed to really wake up, but it's too soon to tell. I went back to their website and I mean, overall, it doesn't look that much different to me. I want to believe their hiring process and design process has changed, but I can't tell after a few months just by browsing through their site. And honestly, I think this brand's just finally had their past catch up with them. That's all. It's interesting because again, I wrote this back in April before the controversy had started. So I'd been sitting on this script for a couple months now. So to see them fall apart over these actions has been, I don't know, a little bit satisfying, I guess. They only seem to believe that hashtag Black Lives Matter when it's clear they're going to lose customers, not because Shadi actually feels that way. If she did, well, none of this would have happened and her past wouldn't be coming back to bite her. So all in all, I still feel the same way. I'd rather go somewhere else for my clothes and that's that. Too much would have to change about this company for me to support it to the point where it seems like it's a loss but feel free to let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. But anyway, this is where I'm going to end today's video now. And hopefully they don't make me make a part two because I really don't enjoy talking about this company. If you learned something new today, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you're new here, make sure to subscribe. If you want more content from me, including sources I use to create this video, they'll be down below in my description box, as well as all of my second channels I'm involved with and all of my social media. So with that being said, that's where I'm going to end it. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.